Viewers at home, you are welcome to my presentation on pricing decisions. Pricing decisions. In this presentation, I will examine the following. Number one, general overview. General overview of pricing decision. Of pricing decisions. Number two, I will examine the approaches. Approaches to pricing decisions. Number three, I will consider the steps for determining the optimum price of a product. Steps for the determination of the optimum price of a product. I will also solve two work uh, two work examples, two examples from the past ACC examination questions. Please watch this presentation to the end. If this is your first time of coming across my channel, or if you have not subscribed in the past, please hit the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so that you'll be able to receive a notification message each time I drop a new video. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you and God bless you. What is a price? Price is the value at which one item can be exchanged for another. The value at which one item can be exchanged for another is said to be the price. The issue in pricing decision is the determination of the selling price. Determination of the selling price. That is the cause core issue with the pricing decision. The element of price is always instru instrumental to the level of demand. The price element is always instrumental to the level of demand. In the normal demand situation, the law of demand states that the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded and vice versa. I repeat, the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. That means the price and quantity demanded of a product, quantity demanded, are inversely related. Price and quantity demanded are inversely related. If we have price in dollar and quantity demanded in units, if the price is 10 naira, consumer might demand it for 100 units. And when the price increases to 12, quantity demanded will reduce, let's say 80. When the price increases to 13, consumer might demand for 75. You can see that as the price increases, quantity demanded decreases. That is an inverse relationship. The price and quantity demanded of a commodity are inversely related. Approaches to pricing decision. Approaches to pricing pricing decision. There are three approaches to pricing decision. Approaches to pricing decision. To pricing decisions. There are three approaches to pricing decision. Number one, demand-based approaches. Demand-based approaches. Number two, we have cost-based approaches. Cost-based approaches. Cost-based approaches. Number three, we have marketing-based approaches or market-based approaches. 
market based approaches. These are the three approaches to pricing decision. These are the three approaches to pricing decision. The first approach is the demand based approaches. The second one, the cost based approach. And the third one is the market based approach. I want to start with number one, which is demand based approach. Remember, demand is the quantity or commodity that consumers are willing and able to purchase at a given price over a given period of time. The quantity that consumers are able to buy at a given price over a specified period of time. That is demand. And remember the law of demand which I have stated earlier. The law of demand, all things being equal, the law of demand states that the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded. That is the law of demand. And the higher the quantity demanded, the lower the price. And vice versa. So demand based approaches Demand-based approaches. So the price of the product and the quantity demanded of that product are inversely related. I've told you earlier that the price and the quantity demanded, I've told you that they are inversely related. That is, when the price increases, the quantity demanded of that product decreases and vice versa. If you plot this in a graph to form a, this is demand schedule. This is a demand schedule, a table that shows the inverse relationship between the price and the quantity demanded. That is demand schedule. Now, if you now plot this demand schedule on a curve, you will discover that the curve will slope downwards from the left to the right showing that a rational consumer may prefer to buy more of the commodity when the price of that commodity is very low than when the price increases. That is, the higher the price, the lower the de uh, quantity demanded. If you plot your demand, if you draw your demand schedule on a curve, it will slope downwards. So this is an inverse relationship. This is quantity demanded, uh, quantity demanded, and this is the price. So, so this is demand curve. So, an optimum price can be established. An optimum price can be established if the relationship between the price and quantity demanded are analyzed. So, meaning that our focus in this presentation is to analyze the relationship between the price and the quantity demanded in order to establish the optimum price. Now, that means our focus is the determination of the optimum price. What do we mean by optimum, optimum price of a product? optimum price of a product. What does that mean? An optimum price is the price that will lead to the maximization of profit. That is the price at which profit can be maximized. That means if you sell at that price, then you are going to get the maximum profit. That price is known as the optimum price. No, every business will want to maximize the uh, Profit. So our core focus is the determination of the optimum price. So I want to look at the steps for determining the optimum price of the product. Steps for determining the optimum price of a product. 
Remember, I've told you that an optimum price is the price at which profit can be maximized. Steps for determining the optimum price of the product steps for optimum price determination step number one remember i've told you that optimum price is the price at which profit can be maximized step one determine the price function where it is not given step one determine the price function where the price function is not given so you determine that so to determine the price function using this algebraic expression using this expression p equal to a minus b q so you determine the price function using this expression so where p is the price we are P equals the price of the product. B, uh, Q is the quantity demanded. Quantity demanded. Q is the quantity demanded. A is the intercept. That is the maximum theoretical price at which demand will fall to zero. A is the intercept, that is, the maximum theoretical price at which demand will fall to zero. B is the gradient of the line. B is the gradient of the line. And to calculate the gradient, we have the y dx, which is change in y, I mean change in price, change in price, in price, over change in quantity demanded quantity demanded so this will give you the value of b and the value of b is always negative that is why in this price function you have minus there if you put minus if you put plus the minus in the value of b is what will change that plus to minus but if you put minus in, if you write it by having a minus bq, that means you don't need, you are going to forget the minus, the negative sign in the result obtained for b. So you make it positive. So you substitute it. So take note of that. So as I was saying, b is change in price over change in quantity demanded. And if you have change in price to be change in quantity demanded, your change in price will be price 2 minus price 1 and change in quantity demanded will be quantity 2 minus quantity 1 so that is the value of b that's how to get the value of b that is step one i've told you that step one is to determine the price function step two step two determine the total revenue function you determine the total revenue function. That is step two. Step two, determine the total revenue function. Remember, if you buy 20 pieces, or if you sell 20 pieces of markers, of this marker, if you sell each one, at 100 naira each that means the total revenue will be 20 times 100 and the 20 times 100 20 is the quantity sold and the 100 naira is the price for a unit therefore total revenue total revenue equal to price total revenue equals to price times quantity price times quantity I told you, you sold a piece of this marker at 20 naira, and the quantity sold is 100. That means your revenue will be 20,000, which is 2,000. So, 
That is the total revenue. Remember your price function. Your price function established is price is A minus BQ. If you substitute A minus BQ for price in this price function, in this revenue function, remember price is A minus BQ. Price is A minus BQ. That is price function times quantity demanded. So that means total revenue. Total revenue, TR. Therefore, total revenue function will be, if you open the bracket, A times Q will be AQ. Let me use small letter Q. So A times Q will be AQ. A times BQ will be a times minus BQ will be minus BQ squared. This is the total revenue function. Then step three. Step three, derive the marginal revenue function. Step three is to derive the marginal revenue function. Derive. Step three is to derive the marginal revenue function. The marginal revenue function by differentiating by differentiating the total revenue function If you differentiate the total revenue function, then you will get the marginal revenue function. So you differentiate the total revenue function. Remember the total revenue function. We have TR equals to AQ minus BQ square. To get the marginal revenue, marginal revenue which is MR, will be equal to DTR DQ. DTR DQ. Derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity. If you differentiate AQ, it will be A minus, minus, if you differentiate BQ squared, you have 2 times B, which is 2Q. So meaning that even though you are not good in differentiating, to get your marginal revenue, remember we have given you the price function. We said price equal to A minus BQ. If price is A minus BQ, just multiply this by 2 to get the marginal revenue. That means you go back to your price function. Marginal revenue will be equal to A minus... No, if you multiply this by 2. Sorry, this will be 2BQ. 2BQ. If you now multiply, if you multiply your, your this one by 2, no, this is a price function. Price equals to A minus BQ. Just multiply this by 2. Then you have marginal revenue equals to A minus 2BQ. This is the marginal revenue function, which is the same as the result obtained by differentiating the total revenue function. Please take note of that. Step four. Step four. Determine the marginal cost function. Step four. Determine the marginal cost. Cost function. You determine the marginal cost function. This will always be our average variable cost. Your marginal cost will always be equal to average variable cost. AVC is average variable cost. Average variable cost. That is your variable cost per unit. Variable cost per unit. Your marginal cost will already be equal to that. The last step, step five, is to, is, 
your uh, to maximize profit mr will be equal to mq profit is maximized to maximize profit profit is maximized where mr that is your marginal revenue obtained here equals to mc that is marginal cost I've told you that your marginal cost will be the average variable cost. So when you equate that, then you solve to find the value of Q. So that is the steps for determining the optimum price of a product. I want to take questions as work example. I'm going to take two, I'm going to solve two work examples. Example one. Example one, ABC Limited manufactures blood jets. It has been asserting that the market for blood jet is as follows. The first asterisk, at unit price of $20, no blood jet is demanded or sold. The second asterisk, at a unit price of knee, 5,000 blood jets are demanded. The third asterisk. For price levels intermediate between $20 and knee, there is a linear relationship between price and demand. The variable cost of manufacturing a blood jet is $5 at all levels of output required. Calculate the selling prices, which we maximize one revenue and two profit in each case determine the appropriate contribution solution you have the price price and the quantity demanded If you go back to the question, you were told in the first asterisk, asterisk at unit price of $20, no blood jet is demanded or sold. When price is $20, price $20, the quantity demanded or sold demanded is zero. Then the second asterisk, at unit price of me. 5,000 blood jets are demanded where price is knee, that is price of zero. Quantity demanded is 5,000 blood jets. So this is price one and this is price two. This is quantity one and this is quantity two. I've told you that the first thing, the first step is to determine the price function, your price function. I've told you that the price function, we have P equals to A minus B Q. That is the price function. Now, I've told you that your B is change in price over change in quantity. B is changing price over change in quantity. Then, after that change in price is P2 minus P1. Why change in quantity is P2 and Q2 minus Q1. Now, let's determine the value of B. So, B equals to P2 minus P1 over Q2 minus Q1. Our P2 is zero. Minus P1, which is $20. Over Q2 is 5000 Over Q1, minus Q1, which is zero as well. If you have 20, zero minus 20, that will be minus 20. Over 5000 minus zero, that will be 5000 You now divide. Therefore, 
the value of B, B will be equal to minus 0 0.004. That is minus 20 divided by 5,000. That will give us minus 0 0.004. You go back to the price function. Remember our price function. We have P equals to A minus BQ. You have got the value of B. Our P, note the initial price. If you like, you may use the initial price. The initial price, you have price of 20, and the quantity demanded then is zero. So 20 and uh, zero. Price is 20. You want to determine the value of A. You want to solve for A. So your price, your P1 is 20 and Q1 is 0. If you like, you may use P2 and Q2. You will still arrive at the same result. P1 is 20. Our P is 20 equals to A minus B. And our B is 0 0.004 times Q and our Q is zero. I've told you that the reason why we have minus in the price function is because this value of B will be negative. So we don't need to change this to plus. So we know that it is negative originally. So we have 20 equals to A 0 0.004 times zero. That will be minus is zero. Therefore, A equal to 20 plus zero will still be 20. You have got the value of A. Now go back to the price function again. Your price function, you have P equals to A, and our A is 20 minus B. B is 0 0.004, 0 0.004 Q. I tell you that you don't need to change this to plus. So the reason for putting minus in the formula is because the value of B will already be negative. So you don't need to change, you don't need to say minus as minus plus and change it to plus. No. You have got the value of price. Then, the second step is to determine the total revenue function. I've told you that the total revenue, TR, I said it is the product of price function times quantity. And our price function is this. So we have 20, minus 0 0.004 Q. Therefore, total revenue, if now multiply this one by Q again, you know this is the price. Price function is 20 minus 0 0.004 Q. That is the price function. Multiply by Q quantity. So that means you'll be having 20 Q minus 0 0.004 Q squared. That is the total revenue function. The next thing is to determine the marginal revenue. Marginal revenue. I've told you that marginal revenue, you differentiate the total revenue function. If you find the derivative of total revenue with respect to the quantity. So if you differentiate this, it will be 20 minus, if you differentiate this, you have this times 2. If you multiply that by 2, then you have 0 0.008, 0 0.008 Q. So that is the marginal revenue. Alternatively, I've told you that if you are not good in differentiating, you just go back to the price function and multiply. You know this is our price function. Price function. Just multiply this. The coefficient of Q, just multiply by 2. So if you have that will be uh, marginal revenue equal to 20 minus if you multiply this by 2, then you have 0 0.008 Q. So that is the marginal revenue. Now requirement one, you are to find, you are to calculate the selling price which will maximize revenue. It is revenue you want to maximize, not profit in Roman figure one. To maximize revenue. Just equate your marginal revenue to zero. Revenue will be maximized, not profit this time around. Revenue will be maximized when ML 
equal to zero. That is where marginal revenue equal to zero. So you put your marginal revenue to zero. Then you have 20 minus 0 0.008 Q. 20. If you equate your marginal revenue to zero, you have 20 minus 0 0.008 Q equals to zero. So, solve for Q. You have minus 0 0.008 Q equal to zero minus 20 will be minus 20. If you now divide 20, in order to make to make a Q the subject of the formula, divide both sides by 0 0.008. So that means the value of Q will be 2,500. 20, 20, minus 20 divided by minus 0 0.008, it will give us 2,500 units. That is the quantity that will be sold to maximize revenue. And remember you have to calculate the selling price. It's not the quantity. So you, since it is, it is the selling price you need, you go back to the price function. It is the selling price you need, and our price function is 20 minus 0 0.004Q. So the price function now, now substitute for Q in the price function. So since our price function, P equals to 20 minus 0 0.004Q, where Q is 2,500. Substitute 2,500 for Q, then you have 20 minus 0 0.004 times 2,500, which will be 20 times minus 0 0.004 times 2,500. That will give us 10. So the price will be 20 minus 10, and that will be $10. So that will be $10. Dollar. So you are also asked to find, you are to calculate uh, the selling price which will maximize revenue. So that is the selling price that will maximize revenue and the appropriate contribution and the appropriate contribution. Remember contribution is sales less variable cost. Sales less variable cost will give us the contribution. So to calculate our contribution now, contribution. Now our selling price is ten dollar as calculated. Less variable cost. And how much is our variable cost per unit? Now, if you go back to the question, the variable cost of manufacturing a budget is $5 at all levels of output. So if the variable cost is $5 per unit, $5, that is variable cost. Cost, that is five. That makes contribution margin now. Margin. And that will be 10 minus 5, that will be $5. Number of units sold, number of units sold to earn that revenue. The number of units sold is 2,500. 2,500 times 5. 2,500 times 5 then we have $12,500. Therefore, total contribution is $12,500. $12,500. That is the requirement one. Requirement two, Roman figure two. Roman figure two, to maximize profit and the contribution as well. You want to maximize profit this time around. I've told you that profit is maximized. If you look at the step five, profit is maximized. We are MR equal to MC. Profit 
is maximized. We are the marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. Remember, I've told you that your marginal cost is the same as it's always the same as the average variable cost, which is the variable cost per unit, and that is given to be five dollar. The marginal revenue function, as calculated, is twenty. The marginal revenue function, so we got twenty. No, this is the TR, the Q. We got 20 minus 0 0.008 Q. This is the marginal revenue function. Just equate your marginal revenue function to the marginal cost. So we have the marginal revenue function, which is 20 minus 0 0.008 equals to marginal cost. I've told you that your marginal cost will always be the same as the average variable cost, which is the variable cost per unit, and which is given to be 5. Let, sorry, this is marginal revenue. There is Q here. So the marginal revenue function, which is 20 minus 0.008Q. So that is the marginal revenue function. Now let me make you the subject of the formula. Then you have minus 0.008Q equals to 5 minus 20. When well, you bring 20 to the right hand side to meet it there. You have minus 0.008q equals to 5 minus 20. That would be minus 15. Minus 15. And you want to solve for q. You divide both sides by 0, minus 0 0.008. So your q now will be minus 15 over Minus 0 0.008. So if you divide that, then you have Q to be 1875. Therefore, the quantity that will lead to the maximum profit is 1875 units. Therefore, the value of Q that will lead to maximum profit equal to 1875 units. So you have got the value of Q. Then, and you are equally asked to calculate your contribution. And remember, you will also need to determine the price. So you will need to determine price by substituting into the price function. The price function earlier calculated was uh, you have the price function which is 20 20 minus 0 0.004 q so that is the price function so our price function p equal to 20 minus 0 0.004 q so you now substitute this quantity for q in the price function so we have p equals to 20 minus 0 0.004 times Q. And our Q is 1875. 1875. So if you multiply 1875 by 0 0.004, then you have, we have 20 minus, the product of this is 7.5. Now, why is subtract 7.5 from 20? There you have 12.5. So P equals to $12.5. That is the price at which profit can be maximized. Now, you want to determine the contribution now. Remember, contribution says selling price less variable cost. Now, to determine our contribution now, contribution. So we have selling price as calculated, and that is 12.5. Then less variable cost, and that is $5 as earlier given. If you subtract $5 from 12.5, then you have $7.5, and that is contribution margin. 
contribution margin. Then you now have number of units sold. Number of units sold to maximize profit. Now, number of units sold. And that is 1875 as calculated. 1875. That is our Q. 1875. If you now multiply 1875, by 7.5 7.5 times 1875 then we have 14062.5 therefore total contribution equal to 14062.5 dollar that is the total contribution so that is the solution to that question. Because of our time, uh, we will not be able to solve the second example in this uh, video, but I will provide the second example in another video. And then other areas, you know, I'm, I've only considered the demand-based approaches to pricing decision. I've only considered the demand-based approaches. Then the cost-based approaches and market-based approaches will be considered in another presentation. Thanks.